How many solar panels should you get? What size of inverter? Do you need a battery? How big a battery? And what's the best energy tariff to be on? What if you have an EV or a heat pump? It's not easy setting yourself up with solar. There are so many options, but don't worry. I've created an easy to use online tool that can help you make the right decisions. Let's check it out. Hi, I'm Gary and welcome back to my channel, Gary Does Solar. I recently made a video on Octopus Energy's latest tariff, Octopus Flux, a time of use tariff with peak and off peak periods, both for import and export. Along with that video, I created an Excel spreadsheet that would allow you to model different solar and battery configurations to see how that tariff might benefit you. If you've not seen that video, there's a link in the description. Now, spreadsheets are not for everyone, so I developed a much easier to use web-based utility instead. This utility allows you to enter your solar and battery configuration, or perhaps several different configuration options that you're looking at, in order to see what would work best for you with Octopus Flux, or indeed any other energy tariff you're interested in. The utility is completely free, and I'd like to show you now just how easy it is to use. Here it is then. The utility is essentially a theoretical model of how a particular solar and battery setup will perform over the course of a single day. The screen is split up into two sections. Down the left there are a number of settings which can be configured to suit an existing or planned solar setup. We'll go through these shortly. And on the right you can see a number of statistics and charts showing the output of the model based on those settings. This begins with a summary at the top showing the cost of electricity imported any revenue you might have generated from exporting solar, the battery level at the end of the day, and the profit or loss for the day based on the import and export, and also the value of any charge remaining in the battery. Below that, there are a number of useful charts. The solar generation chart shows the level of generation throughout the day, home energy consumption as it changes throughout the day, tariff details for both import and export, currently set up for the Octopus Flux tariff, energy imported and exported throughout the day, and finally a chart showing the battery level throughout the day expressed as a percentage. Then below these charts is a table which shows all of the detail for the model for those that want it. OK, let's look at each of the settings on the left in turn then, starting with the solar and inverter. There are two settings here. The first is the size of your solar array expressed as kilowatt hours peak, and the second is the size of your inverter in kilowatts. At the moment they're both set to the same value, 5, but let's see the effect of a larger array with the same sized inverter. If we change the array size to 7, you can see that in the solar generation chart, the inverter is now clipping power from 10am. This is because we've reached the maximum power of the inverter. It's always worth considering having a solar array larger than your inverter size, because this allows the inverter to operate at its most efficient point longer in the day. The next settings are to do with the performance of your solar array. At the height of summer, and if your array is facing directly at the sun in the middle of the day, you could expect your array to be outputting at its peak, in this case 7 kilowatts. You might want to model for a different day, for example during the winter, when the sun is lower in the sky, or you might want to model for a cloudy day. To do this, just reduce the performance accordingly. You can see that as we reduce the performance to model an increasingly cloudy day, our export revenue for the day reduces in line with that, and also our profit, to the point where we are now incurring a loss. To model a winter's day, we not only reduce the performance, but we should change the season to winter as well. This is because the length of time the sun is up is shorter in winter, as you can see here in the solar generation chart. If you're not sure about what kind of generation you would get at different times of the year, Please take a look at this video I made recently, which shows you how to get that data for your own location. The link is in the description. Moving on to battery settings then. The first setting is the size of your battery in kilowatt hours. If we move down to the energy and battery charts, then change the battery size to say 9.5 kilowatt hours, you can see the effect on the model. The larger battery, as expected, takes longer to charge, and during that extra time there is less export. Later in the day the battery discharges, but because there is more charge in it to begin with, there's still around 60% charge remaining at the end of the day. The next setting is the battery type, AC or DC coupled. 
An AC coupled battery is not quite as efficient as a DC coupled battery as energy has to be converted from DC to AC then back to DC and finally back to AC again with each conversion losing a percentage of power. A DC coupled battery on the other hand only has a single conversion from DC to AC. Each conversion has a loss typically around 3% but you can set that here for your own battery. Just check the data sheet. In practice with this model I found that it doesn't make a whole lot of difference whether your battery is AC or DC coupled. You can see the effect on profit for the day as I swap between the two. It's only around 10 pence difference. The next setting is the battery charge and discharge rate and this is an important one. Even if your solar array is producing 5 kilowatts, not all of that power can go into the battery because batteries have a limit on the charging rate. Here we're modeling a generation 2 give energy battery which has a charging rate of 3.6 kilowatts. And it's the same with discharging. If your home consumption is say 6 kilowatts in the evening when there is no sun, your battery may not be able to supply all that and so you'll be drawing from the grid. The next setting is if you want to model the day after this one. You can see here that at the end of the day the battery is at 57%. If we put that value here you can see how the next day looks. In this case we're able to start exporting earlier because the battery level reaches 100% quicker. Then there are some settings for forced charging and discharging. These allow you to capitalize on off-peak import and peak export periods. For example you can set a forced charge of 3 hours from 2 a.m. like this to coincide with the flux off-peak import period. You can see in the charts that we're now importing energy from 2 a.m. and the battery rapidly charges over the next three hours as a result. And if your battery supports forced discharge, you can set a forced discharge of three hours from 4 p.m. like this to coincide with the flux peak export period. And again, you can see in the charts that the battery rapidly discharges at that time and the export increases as a result. Let's now look at the home energy consumption settings. The first is your usage profile. The default is mainly morning and evening and you can see this in the chart on the right. Just select the profile that most closely matches your own. The next setting is your total daily consumption in kilowatt hours and you can estimate this from your energy bill. The utility will ensure that whatever profile you select it will take into account this value. For example if I change the total daily consumption to 30 kilowatt hours. Then there is a setting for your base load. You can see that as you change this the profile adjusts itself accordingly. Finally there's a setting that allows you to add some additional usage consumption that might not happen every day. For example charging an EV or using high energy appliances such as washing machines or clothes dryers. Simply select the number of hours, the starting time and the power rate to see the effect in the charts. In our example here we'll charge an EV at 7 kilowatts for 3 hours starting at 2 a.m. to coincide with the flux off-peak import rate. The final settings are all related to the energy tariff. They're already set up for the octopus flux tariff but you should check the actual rates for your region as they vary. It's very easy to do, just use this link in the video description, go down to check your rates and enter your postcode. If you're on a flat tariff, you can easily change to that by turning off the off-peak and peak tariffs, then entering the flat rate for your tariff as the default rate. And if you don't receive any monies for export, you can simply set that rate to zero. Let me show you how to set it up for the Octopus Go tariff. First, find out the Octopus Go rates in your area, again using the link in the description, and enter your postcode like we did before. Enter the default import and export rates. Then set up the import off-peak rate which runs from 0.30 hours to 4.30 hours. Now this utility only deals in hours so we'll run it from midnight. Underneath the settings, if this utility is useful to you and you wish to support me in my work on this channel, please feel free to click on one of these. Many thanks. Just to finish off then, you don't need to have a battery to use this utility. Just set the battery size to zero in that case. And if you're not able or you don't want to have solar panels on your house, you can see what savings you might achieve with just a battery. To do this, just set the solar array size to zero. 
So that's the utility then. You can start using it right away by entering this URL into your browser, garydoessolar.com forward slash go. Hope you enjoy using it and please don't forget to like and subscribe and I'll see you soon in the next video.